Hey guys, so I just got back from uh, two pre-screenings. Um, basically, I've been having a really horrible day. A really, really horrible day. And going into these movies, I was in a very sour mood. Um, for anybody wondering, I, I basically got uh, let go from one of my jobs. If you don't know, I've been working two jobs for the last three months. And I basically just... Uh, an hour after I got let go from that job, I went right to the movies, and so I was still in a sour mood when I got to the theater. Um, and I was worried because of that I would not have a very unbiased opinion about these movies. I'd be like, this, this movie fucking sucked, uh, even if it was not bad, uh, just because I was in such a foul mood. Um, now, the first movie I saw was Maleficent. Maleficent was a movie that, from the trailers, looked alright. Um, I thought it looked basically like any fantasy adventure film from the past ten years. The world looked almost exactly identical to something like Alice in Wonderland and uh, or Oz the Great and Powerful, both directed by Disney, or made by Disney. Uh, they looked just fucking identical to me. Um, but... One thing that it did intrigue me was uh, Angelina Jolie as Maleficent. She looked like she was going to be having a lot of fun with this film uh, in this role, and she definitely looked really great in that uh, in that part. Uh, she looked definitely looked the part. I was definitely intrigued uh, uh, if she could carry the film, if she was going to be able to carry the film. Uh, and she's a great actress. I, I definitely thought she could. Uh, I thought maybe, I was worrying that going into this movie, I was worrying that it was going to be like a case of like Snow White and the Huntsman and that Charlie's Farron carried that movie in my opinion. The only reason that movie was halfway decent was because of her. Um, because definitely Kristen Stewart definitely couldn't carry that fucking film. She's fucking terrible as Snow White. Yeah, it was, but from this tra from the movie, from what I was being told, it was going to be focusing a lot on Angelina Jolie. Specific, I mean, it's pretty evident in the fact that her name's on the title. But, um, so yeah, I was I, I thought, all right, this movie could be all right. And like I said, uh, you know, this movie had an unenviable task of being the first movie I saw. And you know what? <laughs> this is going to sound weird, but. This movie helped me get, take my mind off things. And I recommend it. <laughs> because of that. <laughs> That's the weirdest recommendation I've ever given to a movie. But what the hell. And also at the same time, this movie was not that bad. It was pretty good. I thought it was a pretty good flick. I, there wasn't really anything that made me mad about it. I mean, it wasn't like perfect or anything like that. It did have some problems here and there, but... Overall, I did enjoy it. Um, it was a pretty solid flick. Uh, Angelina Jolie is having a blast in this movie. Uh, she is the best part, by far, in this film. She carries this movie. And luckily, the movie is about her. That's it. Uh, Sleeping Beauty has a, like, a supporting role, and that's a good thing. Um, and it wasn't like where Snow White and the Huntsman... Where Charlie's Farron only had a few um, parts in, you know, in, here and there in the movie. No, Angelina Jolie takes up most of the movie, and that's a good thing. And she definitely carries this film uh, very much. Uh, and that's not to say, like, all the other actors were bad. Like, Ellie Fanning uh, was alright as Sleeping Beauty or Aurora. Um... I thought the scenes between with her and Angelina Jolie were really good. I thought they really acted uh, well off one another. Uh, they definitely did a really good job. I also have Charlotte Copley, um, who every time I see him in a movie, I, I enjoy him. And he's pretty good in this. Uh, he's basically the fucking villain in this movie. I'll get into that for, in a second. But, yeah, he's the villain in this movie. He's the king. Uh, Ellie Fanning's... Uh, uh, dad, um, yeah, he's basically a villain in this movie, which is really weird, um, cause this movie does take a lot of liberties on fucking the story of Sleeping Beauty, I'll get into that in a second, um, but yeah, he's pretty fun, and he's, you know, 
he, he can play crazy very well, and he's he's definitely crazy in this fucking movie. Um, I also got fucking oh, I, I was I was told going in that uh, Angelina Jolie's daughter was gonna be in this movie, and I, I might be wrong on this. I didn't look it up, but I'm pretty goddamn certain I was Angelina Jolie's daughter playing the younger Maleficent because. If so, by God, does that girl look like her mom? <laughs> she definitely looks like her mom. She definitely has her mom's eyes, too. Jesus Christ. She, yeah, she definitely looks... It's the spitting image of her mom. Uh, and she did fine. It was, I thought she did fine as a young Maleficent. Um, I had no problem with her. She wasn't, like, a really bad child actress. Um... I mean, uh, I mean, she's being raised by fucking Brad Pitt and Angela Jolie, two really good actors. Um, I hope that she would maybe <laughs> get the acting gene from, I don't know, is that Brad Pitt's kid too? I don't know. Maybe it is, I don't know. I, I don't fucking know. But yeah, I, I thought they were, I thought she was pretty decent. Um, I'm trying to think who else um, Thank God. And there's nothing really, nobody, there's a lot of unknown people um, in this movie. Other than, yeah. Uh, the one, if I were to complain about any cast, uh, any members of the cast, it would be the Free Fairies. They were <sighs> really annoying comic reliefs, even despite the fact that you had Melda Staunton uh, 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 being one of the fairies. She was uh, the fuck, the lady from uh, that pink wearing lady, the pink sweater wearing lady from, uh, Order of the Phoenix, I'm forgetting her name, Umbridge, yeah, is Umbridge, yeah, uh, Harry Potter and Order of Phoenix, uh, if you've seen, if you've read the books, you know who I'm talking about, um, yeah, she's in, she's the only recognizable person in the fairies, as, as the fairies, and, uh, the fairies also didn't look very good CGI-wise, they definitely looked cartoonish, they looked just as realistic as the cartoon ones did. I, I didn't care too much for the fairies whatsoever. I thought every time they were on screen, they were just buzzkill, really. Um, other than that, I thought the cast of this movie was fine. Um, I thought the effects... I thought the the look of this movie was pretty cool. Uh, I definitely did. I thought the the look of this movie did look pretty, uh, uh, pretty awesome. Um... Definitely, definitely, uh, it, it was, it looked pretty cool in 3D also. Um, also some of the effects, were, a lot of the effects were really good. There was some iffy here and there. The fairy effects, like I said, were, uh, not very good, but there were some effects like the giant trees that were like basically, that could walk and had faces and stuff, looked pretty cool. I thought they did. I thought they looked pretty cool. There was like, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else, but yeah, for the most part, I thought the effects looked pretty cool. Um, I also like the this movie isn't exactly uh, just a straight up adaptation of fucking Sleeping Beauty. It isn't at fucking all, not one bit. Because no joke, Maleficent is the good guy in this movie, and the king, like I said, is the bad guy, is the villain. There, only briefly is Maleficent, like, seen as the villain, but that is completely forgotten about. Um, basically, <laughs> it's when, it shows the, movie begins where it shows the origin story of Maleficent, and that she was a young fairy who met a boy, uh, who, uh, I met a boy who uh, wandered on into her land and she fell in love with the boy as they grew up uh, together and he basically abandoned her and she was heartbroken and then he did come back and he almost tried to kill her but didn't cut off her wings and that guy ends up becoming the king or Charlotte Copley um and he ends up having a daughter, and she gives her her his daughter the Sleeping Beauty curse. That's a little. I was like, all right, this is different, you know, whatever. This is you know, 
kind of kind of given a backstory to Maleficent. Where this movie ventures veers way off from the Sleeping Beauty story is that then basically Maleficent, after she gives her that curse, and she basically watches over Sleeping Beauty Aurora as she grows up and basically takes care of her. And at one point, Sleeping Beauty actually wants to live with Maleficent. No joke. They have a little relationship. They bond together. That's really weird. <laughs> so just, that's really weird. And <laughs> and she doesn't bond at all with her father, her actual father, who is on a mission to fucking kill Maleficent. Uh... And again, Maleficent is the good guy in this. Absolutely. She's the more sympathetic character. And she actually is, you know... Uh, and, like, any typical fashion, it's... You know, the only reason she's was this evil is because of man. This is a man. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> fucking men. <laughs> I know, we are fucking dicks, so you just... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but... <laughs> I do like, also... Uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but they also put a little twist on the whole True Love's for uh, True Love's Kiss. They do introduce, like, Prince Charming halfway through the film, like, out of fucking nowhere. And I was sitting, and literally her, him and Ellie Fanning only have one scene together, and they're supposed to believe that they're in love with each other in typical Disney fucking fashion. Um... But they do have a pretty interesting twist. Do an interesting twist on uh, uh, True Love's Kiss. That I, I actually thought it was pretty clever. And I actually knew... I kind of guessed that early on. Uh, what they were, you know, Where they were going with that. Um, and I'm glad they actually did that. Um, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed like the, the, the clever little... Uh, changes to the story that they made uh i i thought it was pretty clever uh it, you know um i you know i i like something different every so often i'm not a person i i mean i i never read the fairy tale so i don't know how different if this is any you know closer to the actual fairy tale i don't know i believe not but uh i only know you know from seeing the Disney cartoon from back then, and uh, I know this is definitely not the Disney cartoon, but so, like I said, at least they did something different. I like that. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm, forget, I'm thinking. There's stuff that I really disliked about this. There, there are things about this movie I disliked. I can't think off the top of my head. As you know, it's been a while since uh, it's been a few hours since I've seen this movie, so that's probably why. Um, it always happens. I, um, I'm, I have the other movie, the second movie I saw more fresh in my mind than this one. Um, and I'm gonna probably remember. But honestly, there, even the complaints that I know I had, I, I damn it, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Like, ah, damn it, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't. I'm, I'll just sit here forever trying to figure that out. So I'm not gonna. Um, I do, I do recommend, uh, Maleficent. I definitely do. It's, it's not a perfect little flick. It's, uh, it definitely, uh, it definitely, but it is definitely, uh, like, a different take on Sleeping Beauty that I haven't seen before. And I, because of that, I do recommend it. Definitely go check it out. Um, uh, let's talk about the trailers I got. I got, I got, let's see, how many? Uh, four new trailers. I got, uh, Big Hero 6, uh, which is, uh, animated, uh, film. First an Disney, Disney, uh, Marvel animated film. It looked pretty fun. Oh, that trailer looked pretty funny. I actually laughed at that trailer a lot. Uh, it looked really funny. I thought, uh, that, that could be cute. Um, it's like a kid who builds a robot like a superhero robot. I don't know, something like that. I don't know. And it's like a fat robot. <laughs> and they're, he's trying to put it on the suits of armor on this fat robot. And the pieces keep popping off and stuff like that. It looked pretty funny. Um, the, the the teaser looked funny. It was just a teaser. I thought the teaser, from the teaser, it looked funny. 
Uh, I had the Jupiter Ascending trailer. Uh, the new Wachowski Brothers movie, or the Wachowski brother and sister, I guess. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's all I can say about it. Uh, Wachowskis haven't done anything good in a long time, so other than The Matrix, they haven't done anything good since The Matrix, really. Um, <laughs> that's all I can say about that. Uh, that a new Earth to Echo trailer, which is basically the same uh, trailers I've been getting. It was just, I think it was a little bit shorter. Eh, like, I still don't care for that movie that much. Um, and now I got a new Get On Up trailer, which is the James Brown biopic. I'm sold on that fucking movie. I am sold. I I love James Brown, uh, and it's starring the guy that uh, starred as Jackie Robinson in that uh, Jackie, Jackie Robinson biopic that came out uh, a year ago. Or, yeah, it was a year ago? Yeah. Uh, it looks... I, I st I'm still sold on that movie. Be, that, that should be a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, um, I'll be back with a uh, review for my second movie.